Visionless plus conferencing. Enter your conference code, followed by the pound or hash sign. Thank you. You will now be placed into conference. To mute your line, press star 6. To unmute, press pound 6. Welcome to OLI Systems and an introduction to HiSys OLI. My name is Jim Brofold and I'll take you through a fast tutorial on how to get started with HiSys OLI. Right now you should be seeing a slide that says Introduction to HiSys OLI. Uh, that will let us know that you're up and running with the presentation. And we'll go through this at a fairly uh, rapid pace. If you have any questions, we'll ask you that you email them to support at olisystems.com. But we'll move forward right now. We'll cover in this uh, session uh, an overview of uh, HiSys OLI, some trademark information, and then we'll provide a live demonstration of the interface uh, perform a simple calculation, look at some simple results, and conclude this presentation. OLI Systems uh, was founded in 1971 and, uh, by Dr. Marshall Rafel, and he decided at that, that, at that time to uh, concentrate on aqueous solutions. Uh, we have been in business 19, since 1971, which uh, makes us one of the older simulation companies still out there. Uh, and through our long history, we have been allied with many software partners, notably Aspen Tech, um, to provide interfaces to their codes. Currently, we are going to be looking at HiSys version 3.2 or later, uh, which is using the OLI version 6.6 software base and higher. There are some assumptions that we have with the software. First, we are not going to provide training in high CISO usage. Uh, we assume that the users will be able to start and shut down and perform basic flow sheeting operations within HiSys. Uh, we're also going to assume that you have a familiarity with uh, aqueous chemistry. We're also going to make a big assumption that HiSys and OLI have been properly installed and that all licensing issues have been resolved. HiSys is a registered trademark of Aspen Technology located in Cambridge, Massachusetts. OLI, the OLI Alliance products, OLI Analyzers, OLI ESP, and any other thing, any other product marked with OLI are registered trademarks of OLI Systems in Morris Plains, New Jersey. In our particular example today, we will be looking at a simple case where we take sodium chloride, which will be supersaturated in water at 25 degrees in one atmosphere. We'll set up the calculation from scratch, we'll run the calculation, and review the output. And right now we will actually share the desktop. So you can actually see uh, what we are doing. In a few moments, you should see the uh, desktop once I start to share it. If you're unable to see the entire desktop, we recommend you use Control and H, which will toggle the live meeting window from full to uh, uh, and uh, minimize screens. Right now, if you're looking at my desktop. This is what I currently use here at OLI. And I am going to just start HiSys in a normal way. We are using HiSys 3.2. And you should see the splash screen uh, up here for HiSys OLI. It may not be entirely visible on your screen. And now we have the HiSys uh, main window. And we are going to uh, move it so you can see the entire screen. In a normal operation, I would minimize, uh, excuse me, maximize this so you would see the entire window. Right now I'm going to start with a new case. And this will bring up the Simulation Basis Manager. There are many tabs here. We're not going to go through them all. Uh, but for the OLI electrolytes portion of this, we start
start with the fluids package, which is located as a second tab. We'll click the second tab, and then we will add a fluid package. So we'll click the Add button. There are many different fluid packages available through HISIS. We're not going to go through them all. The OLI electrolyte package appears down the list, and we will select it. The specific OLI menu appears to the right. Uh, we will normally not be interested in this window. This is only if we want to modify the chemistry. Currently, we're not going to even talk about the chemistry uh, on this window. We need to go back a panel. So we're going to click the X in the corner, and we're back to the Simulation Basis Manager. We're then going to click the Components tab. And you can see that we've added the component list one that was done automatically. We're going to select component list one and then go to view. This brings up the traditional HISIS component view selection dialog. We're going to pick electrolyte, which is the OLI electrolyte component list. And you can see in the right hand window that we have a uh, OLI name, a common name, and a formula. We recommend that you remain with this view. You can change it if you want. And we're going to enter our components. We do have water, or H2O, so I will type H2O in the match window. And you can see that the list quickly sorts down to species that contain the letters H2 and O. There is water, which is highlighted. We'll click the Add Pure button which adds it to the selected components. We're now also going to add sodium chloride, NaCl. And you can see we've got a much smaller list. Sodium chloride is currently highlighted, so we'll select Add Pure. We could do this for any number of components. Uh, up to about 150 components are supported in this window. When we're done, we will click the X button which brings us back to the Simulation Basis Manager. At this point, we are done with our component selections. We would click the button Enter Simulation Environment. In the few moments that this takes, we will actually go out to all the OLI databanks, select all the components, water and sodium chloride, and all the ions, and all vapors, and all solids that correspond to that chemistry, and we will create the OLI chemistry model. A status window, which is difficult to see here, uh, behind the toolbar, or the tool palette rather, uh, explained what was going on with the, the model. Uh, for the moment, we're going to ignore that, and I'm going to concentrate just on the PFD uh, dialog. I'm just going to take a simple material stream, and I'm going to enter it. As you can see, that it is light blue, indicating that it's not calculated. I will double click it, which brings up a traditional HISIS data entry screen. I will enter the temperature, which is 25 degrees. I will then enter the pressure of 101.325 kilopascals which is one atmosphere. Oops, I didn't mean to click off. Double click it again. I will then click on the composition item. And this is the composition. We entered water and sodium chloride. But because there are chlorides and hydrogen ions present in solution, we also get HCl, sodium hydroxide, and a hydrate form of sodium hydroxide. The current composition basis is in mole fraction. We will click the Basis tab here just to click Mole Flows, which is how I prefer to think of these. And I'll enter a value for water. And we will enter 55.508 kilogram moles per hour. This is approximately equal to 1,000 kilograms. It's 1,000 kilograms of water. As we click, we'll bring up a more detailed data entry screen. And I'm also going to enter in 7 moles of kilogram moles of water. Excuse me, I clicked the wrong button there. Actually, 
actually have I erased them all, so I'll put them in again. And we're done. The status bar actually turns green here at the bottom of the data entry screen to indicate that HiSys has actually completed the calculation. I'm going to close the data entry window to show that the window has turned dark blue. That indicates that stream has uh, completed. I will double click it again. And I will go down to properties. This is the basic properties of the stream. I will then go down to composition. This is the traditional high sys view of the composition. I will expand the window to show more of that. And then I will come down to electrolytes. There's two views here. There is properties, and we're looking at the aqueous properties here. The pH is approximately 6.9, and the bulk phase properties of the aqueous phase. I can also look at the solid phase, and these are the species, and the scaling tendencies. The scaling tendency is a ratio of the ions in solution to the thermodynamic solubility limit, the KSP. When that value is 1 or greater, we tend to say that solid is saturated. I can then click on the composition line here, and you can see for the solid phase, I have a mole fraction of 1 for sodium chloride in the solid phase, and the actual value is 0.848732 kilogram moles per hour. I can also see the aqueous phase composition. And you can see that we have neutral hydrochloric acid, the chloride ion, the hydrogen ion, sodium ion, and hydroxide ion. And here are their actual compositions. There, these are, and we have the molality uh, values over here. So that's a brief introduction to how to create this. We assume that you're able to run your own unit operations here. Uh, this is just a very fast way of getting the electrolyte options turned on and enabled. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, we will stop the sharing. Okay. One moment, we will stop the sharing. And conclude. Uh, we've seen that the HiSys OLI interface allows a fast and easy way to solve electrolyte problems in a well known process flow sheet uh, program. And uh, we didn't really talk about it too much, but the chemistry is far more extensive than in HiSys. In fact, HiSys carries no native electrolyte capability on its own. If you do require support information, you can uh, email us at support at OLISystems.com or check us out on the web at www.olisystems.com or you may phone us New York time from 8 to 5 uh, Eastern Standard Time, 973-539-4996, extension 24. We thank you for your time, and if you require any more information, please give us a call. Thank you.